Roll call, please. Mayor Grimminger. Here. Alderwoman Codwell. Here. Alderman Couch. Here. Alderman John Stoopy. Here. Alderman Jokers. Here. Alderman Donnie Stoopy. Alderman Hook. Here. Alderman Prince. Here. Alderman Ross. Here. Mayor, we have a quorum. Thank you. Approve the agenda. Move approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, we uh, under personal appearances, Kara Burt from Downtown Renewal. Hello, Kara. <coughs> what downtown renewal was doing um, i feel like we started off 2015 really strong we had two really great events in february with the chocolate walk and the art walk if you remember the end of february was very cold and we ended up selling 21 tickets for the art walk at the end of february so we were very excited with that that means we at least did our hundred dollar donation for the featured piece so um I think we've got some good momentum going. Uh, we're in the middle of a retreat right now with our board members really realigning all of our goals and doing a whole visioning. Um, and so we hope to have that rolled out in a few months. It's gonna take a lot of work, but we've got some really good people on the board putting some really a lot of energy and effort into um, the organization. So um, also just wanna make you aware of some events that are coming up. Um, fourth Friday, our walk is this Friday and we also have the high school um, art show that's going to be at the Welcome Center. So thanks for allowing us to set, allowing them to set up at the Welcome Center. And um, we have tickets, they're $5 for the art walk, and then we have the $100 featured piece at the end of the night that they can choose from. And um, in April, we have another art walk. And at the end of April, the 24th, 25th, and 26th, we're doing a district-wide yard sale and merchant sidewalk sale. Um, so we are soliciting and going around to the the, sh the, bis the residents and asking them to have yard sales so we can just kind of have a little bit more formal. Um, if they want to get in, this is something we're doing, kind of a neighborhood yard sale type thing. Um, and then the merchants are doing a sidewalk sale for their clearance items and whatnot. Um, the merchants had asked for something to happen in April because there wasn't a whole lot going on in April. So that's the event that they came up with in the committee. And then we have French Festival coming up in June, and the French Festival Committee's really been working hard to expand that festival and have some new attractions in with that this year. So we'll have an update on that probably next month with all the particulars. So. Thanks. Um, more. Okay. Um, first of all, you know, everyone knows, the demolition of the two uh, structures that were declared uh, dangerous buildings and public nuisances was completed. Uh, I'd like to compliment the contractor, Sanford Ross. Not only did he get it done expeditiously, uh, he took great care to protect the public infrastructure, the sidewalks he was crossing. He made sure he was in contact with the neighbors and that they didn't have any surprises and he was aware of any of their concerns. It was, it was a first-rate job all the way around. Um, we um, you have a contract on the agenda tonight with a uh, Bear Engineering uh, for inspection services on the trail. It's kind of the last piece that needs to be in place before we go out to bid. Uh, this is covered by the grant, so um, it, 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 those expenses were anticipated and included and uh, will be reimbursed at 80% from the state of Missouri. Um, Park Board had a, a meeting uh, Monday night. Tom was in attendance. Uh, there was discussion of the... Uh, the budget and the, you know, what happens when we lose the maintenance of the ball field and what funds are available and what can be done with them. So we kind of left that meeting with the understanding that the only real immediate savings that we uh, will realize is the uh, utility cost because the school will take over uh, the utility. The, uh, the employees, we're not, they're going to stay employed and con continue to work so the city doesn't actually have money. Uh, that we didn't otherwise intend to spend. It just will mean we won't fall behind midsummer in mowing anymore, or shouldn't. Um, but the utility cost uh, savings, uh, as as we ante we anticipate them, will be in the order of twenty well twenty four hundred and seventy eight dollars and forty cents. Who figured it out to the penny? Uh, so the issue was whether uh, that money could be reallocated in the budget and, and put into some other line item 
uh, that, that, that could benefit the park. Uh, it's not a lot of money. Uh, I talked to Darren, uh, and he said, well, uh, we, we eliminated all landscaping, and that would be a good amount of money to buy some mulch and do some things that he otherwise would not be able to do. So uh, we have on the agenda tonight a uh, budget amendment uh, that reflects that, and then uh, we'll, uh, again, look forward to a more, and when we, when we go into the next budget year, doing a better analysis of what their needs are and what funds we can, can dedicate to the park. Excuse me, going to the, the report. Are we going to free up some money for some other playground equipment there also? Was that is and did I misunderstand that or what? You did. Can we okay. address that in the budget or in excuse me in the committee report? Okay. I want to answer that yeah. before you write. Yeah. Okay. The. Um, I reported at our last meeting that the levy district was uh, negotiating with Artisan. They uh, have reached an agreement, so they'll be making the repairs to those uh, gates uh, so they can be moved out more easily as needed. Uh, our, we've been uh, discussing the, um, the railroads uh, using the horns during through town middle of the night disturbing people. Uh, I included a, a policy statement that Petrie found uh, for Union Pacific's the use of horns. And, uh, and I initiated contact with BODOT to, uh, to discuss what we, could, what we can do. It turns out there's one guy in Jefferson City who does this. And he's either on vacation or he's not good at returning phone calls. <laughs> Uh, but I'm going to talk to him about the possibility of a quiet zone. Uh, you know, what they require you to do, as I understand it, is uh, you, you've got to make other improvements for safety if you're not going to use the horns. Uh, Oliver and Stoopy had mentioned the possibility of a control arm there, uh, and that would be one of the things that you might do in order to, to, uh, to get them to, 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 to agree to a quiet zone. What I need to find out is who's responsible for what, and uh, that would that I will continue to pursue that. And, uh, you have in your uh, packet a letter from uh, Mr. Oaks of Oaks Furniture. Uh, he's wanting us to consider a lease of the balance of the building at Five Propman. Um, it's the kind of thing we should discuss in closed session, so I don't expect to do any discussion. I'm just kind of reporting it, and then I'll ask for a short closed session after the meeting to discuss that. Finally, I sent out an email. We had a storm drain collapse at <coughs> Ninth and uh, in Market. Um, it, it, and I say it, it's an, there, I have emergency powers if there's a, a problem to solve the problem. Uh, I, I consider this kind of a, an emergency in that I don't think we should wait the month, the month and a half it would take to have specs drawn and advertising for bids and bidding because I, I think it's a bigger problem than that. Now, since then, we shored up the, the hole. It's about three feet from the, this guy's foundation. And, uh, and it's doing a good job of maintaining the, the, the banks. There's some water continually running through this, this, this uh, after we opened it up. What happened was it's an old box drain that apparently that was built, goodness knows when. And one of the walls is concrete and the floor was concrete. But the other wall was actually stone. So it's kind of, and I don't know how that happened. <laughs> a, and then at some point, they put a half pipe on top of it to enclose it. Uh, and, and it was suggested to me at, a, at another meeting today, that was probably done when that house was built uh, in order to give them some, 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 some yard, uh, which would have been, gosh knows how long, I don't know the age of that house. I could have looked it up, I guess. But anyway. The source of that water was suspect. So uh, Elias tested it and it had residual chlorine in it, very low amount of chlorine, but enough to have us check. So we started, dug some potholes up the street and found higher levels of chlorine as we, as, as, as we, as we went up the hill. They ran their camera up there and found exactly kind of where the water was coming into this storm pipe and are trying to find the source of the leak 
Now, um, it, before we, I think we need to fix the leak before we fix the train. And, right. uh, and, and, and so they should, hopefully they will have that fixed tomorrow. And uh, we have a contract uh, for, with, to, to, for, for the contractor to get in and, and, and install a new pipe and everything will fall into place. But uh, that's kind of where that stands. So rather than uh, doing it without your authority, I put the uh, ordinance for entering into the contract on the agenda tonight, just so it has your your, your blessing, and would ask for two reason, uh, readings because we can get it fixed. Is this a isolated issue, or are we going to have to look at all our storm drains everywhere? I mean, is there any opinion on that? If or? we had run a camera up, it, we wouldn't. Have you would have seen that it's a weird construction, but. You know, it, it, it's just one of those, when you dig a hole. But the problem <laughs> is just right in front of that house. It doesn't continue on the No, it goes in, we're going we're gonna to replace the entire reach from a concrete inlet to concrete inlet. It's just this one 100-foot stretch, 170-foot stretch. And uh, above it, it's all concrete, and below it, it's all concrete. That concludes my report. Okay. Questions, anybody? All right, <clears throat> great. Uh, going to staff reports, Eric. involving a, a uh, false impersonation of a police officer on Tuesday. Uh, we're still looking for suspect information on that, but uh, um, I can certainly elaborate on that if you need. Uh, also, I'm looking at uh, proposing an ordinance tonight to restrict uh, parking on 4th Street that would eliminate some of the backup that we have during, during school hours on 4th Street between Jefferson and Washington, and that'll be a little later in the... Uh, on the agenda, but if anybody has any questions for now, I'd be happy to answer those. Uh, you point out that you consulted with both property owners and the school so on that. Correct, owners. correct. Valley Valley School and, and uh, many of the property owners on the west side of the street. I didn't contact the, the property owners on the east side of the street, uh, but this would be uh, affecting the west side of the street. And uh, believe everybody's in favor. Uh, you know, we would obviously have to use the. Uh, resident parking ordinance that we passed a couple of years ago to allow for some of the residents there that actually park on the street. Um, but the school is in favor of it. They're certainly supportive of, of uh, finding parking spaces for the Valley children that, that drive. And hopefully it will eliminate people parking on both sides of 4th Street and open up some of the traffic there through, through the day. Uh, and again, I know we can discuss that more when it comes up on the, on the agenda. Um, I did want to, to follow up I know we had the, uh, the 2007 charger that's been on the uh, staff report for the last couple months it was in the in the shop you got the uh, upper part of the engine rebuilt uh, a couple months ago we got it back had it on the street for a couple days it started messing up again we towed it back to the to the shop and they think now that it's the the lower half of the engine and it's probably going to be too cost prohibitive to repair so uh, I'm going to look at, at some numbers in my budget and hopefully be able to come back quickly with, with some type of proposal for a uh, budget amendment to be able to purchase a couple cars to get in this budget year. Okay. Any questions? Good. Questions, anybody? Thank you, guys. Thank you. Teacher? <coughs> yep. I think everything in my report is pretty self-explanatory. Um, I just wanted to point out that we have um, been seeing an increase in the number of people coming in for certificates of appropriateness, and our process for exempting some reviews has taken place, and I think <coughs> successfully so. Um, there's a few little kinks, but I think just some monitoring of the projects, I think, will make it work really well um, for, for a lot of people that are just doing your basic maintenance and... Um, trying to keep their properties up. So I'm, I'm pleased with how it's going so far. It's only been a month, but so far I think it is, is working the way it was intended to work. Any questions? Any questions? Yes. Go ahead, John. Go ahead. 
Okay. What exactly is a mini retreat? <laughs> I mean, you're going it to means Jamaica's? we're not going anywhere or having fancy food, and it's not a regularly scheduled meeting. Gotcha. How about that? <laughs> no, no fun at the lake or anything like that. No. Just a, a couple of hours on a, maybe on a Saturday <laughs> here. I guess on the occupancy, mm -hmm. we had what nine approved, mm -hmm. ten failed, and six pending. Yes, <coughs> I know that seems like a lot, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. um, you know, a, a permit can fail for, or an inspection can fail for a number of reasons, and it just means that they're going to go back. They'll have a list of things that they have to fix, and and they'll go back and they'll get those fixed, and it'll be fine. Um, there's nothing I think alarming about that. It it does happen. Um, I, I think Bob and I have an understanding that once he goes in and takes a look at things, unless when he goes back there's something really crazy that's happened, he's not going to reinspect every little issue and keep having to go back. He just wants to get the basics covered, and that's what he'll look at when he goes back a second time. So I expect all of those to eventually get done. The pending just means that the inspections haven't been scheduled, is all that means, that they've come in and those inspections haven't been scheduled. Do we have a fifth member yet? We don't. Um, I sent out a couple of, of, of volunteer uh, application. I don't know what we really want to call it an application. We sent those out. Haven't got anything back, but we have a couple of people that have expressed interest. So um, hopefully we will. So far, we've had enough people at the two meetings that we were able to conduct business. So I'm pleased with that. I didn't fix it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Steve. Evening, everyone. Evening. Evening. Uh, last month, uh, Flinger Island came, performed their annual inspection of the wells. Uh, we have been seeing an increase in pressure on our wells down at the well house. Uh, they're recommending some type of pigging or lines cleaning uh, sometime in the near future. I'll be working on numbers for that. Uh, at the beginning of last month, our computer that operates the water treatment plant crashed. Uh, we called around, tried to get prices, get it figured out what we could do. Uh, some SCADA providers were looking at somewhere in the five to $7,000 range for the repairs. Uh, Alliance's IT department came down from Columbia, brought some computers, got it working. Uh, took them two days, but they got it. So no, no out-of-pocket expense. Uh, that being said, uh, starting Monday, well, starting last week, uh, installation of our new SCADA system uh, began, and it was completed today. Uh, staff received about a half a day of training in operations and the benefits of the new SCADA system, and uh, I think everybody's really happy with it. So, Good. 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 so anybody long, wants long to uh, see it in action, you can contact you, yes. stop by, and take a look at it. Yeah. It's neat. I encourage everyone. So. I have one question, Steve. Yes. Um, first of all, you, every report that Alliance submits is very professional, very clear, very easy to read, and thank you for making it like that. Thank you. Uh, under the, the heading safety, yeah. it said safety meeting topic for the period for the first day above one package was the hazard communication and global harmonization. Yeah. I'm curious to know what the heck global harmonization is. <laughs> Global harmonization uh, has to do with MSDSs being converted to SDSs. That's material safety data sheets. <laughs> uh, material safety data sheets is all the information you need to know about any material. Uh, the, the Alliance calls that global harmonization. I yes. love that. That's oh, wait, uh, they're changing them to SDS, which yeah. is, you know. Yeah. It's, it's, and they have the exact same format. They never had a format before that was consistent. And now every so now everything will be the same all over the world. Yeah, every everyone else in the world is consistent except us. So. <laughs> gotcha. Thank you. Steve, when are they going to? Uh, they start on the new well. No, uh, I met with last week. I met with DNR. They came down and Cochrane and uh, Flynn Drilling. They came down and did an inspection of the well field, uh, found a site. Uh, Cochrane's designing it, and they're going to be submitting. Uh, us the plans before they submit it to DNR. Okay. Once they get the plans back from DNR, it, it, it won't be long at all. 
Okay. Oh, that's great. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Steve. And tomorrow we'll be working on 9th Street, trying to locate the source of the water. Good deal. We're going to have a lot of issues with, we're going to be about like we did the other day as far as traffic. Yeah, we're going to be on one side. Yeah. We'll be by the side of the Yeah, that would be good. Thank you. Thank you. And you have the, uh, uh, Gary submitted this report. Dave's still out. Uh, Gary would have been here tonight, but uh, he got sick today. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, but the, I think you know, major work has been, you know, at this time of year, potholes start growing like weeds, and they have to have to fill them. They've been they've been, been doing that. Um, the um, gas company was kind of repairing some of the, you know, they dug these little holes off the city and they weren't doing a good job of repairing them, so they've been coordinating with them to make sure they're doing it properly. And uh, other than that, it's pretty self-explanatory. Okay. You got the pothole hotline still going? Well, uh, I think anybody who wants what to call 883-5400, uh, whoever answers the phone, take the message and get it to, into the field. I don't think that's Immediate. the number on 990. I think no. it's a street shed number. Street Is it? Shed oh, okay. It's, it's a 1 800 pothole. Pothole. Yeah. 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 I wonder what we're going to get for yeah. that. Right. You know, the that's right. problem with calling is that they have, they have an answering machine, I guess. Mm -hmm. so. One of the, the things noted is they pushed up the salt pile and covered it for summer storage. You know, it's, I think that uh, the city staff should be commended for making our salt last. Mm -hmm. This summer, I mean, that was a very yeah. challenging, and uh, I think they did a really good job doing that. Well, they mixed a lot of sand in with it. That helped a lot this winter. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Well, yeah, they did do a good job. They did a great job on the streets yeah. this winter. We, we have enough left for one snow. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully we'll just so we carry it over oh, yeah, in the summer. Yeah. Okay. Martin, this summer they're going to stagger the street sweeping downtown earlier in the morning. Yeah, we try and get on it before the cars get there, yeah. And, uh, we did, did a couple of, like, you know, 4th Street didn't get done very well because if they go out after 8 o'clock, the kids are there. So yeah. uh, they have a couple of places we need to get out early. Mm -hmm. You know, I think I've asked this question before. And, uh, is there some reason why we can't send someone out at 5 o'clock in the morning and start Sweeping streets because of adjusting their work out. Yeah, that would seem like to be the ideal thing to do. We get complaints when the oh, sweeper goes out. Yeah. Well, I, I'm, I that was just asking how loud is the sweeper? Mm -hmm. How loud that would wake is the sweeper? Really? Not if I wasn't bad. already up. Yeah. Well, after Don't George's bed, we got out at five o'clock. It's louder. We got complaints. I think some of the residents downtown would not appreciate that. <laughs> All right, there you go. But if we get out by 6 30 or 7, you know, we're, we're ahead of traffic. We can get down the done pretty, pretty quickly. Do you have an ordinance in St. Jimmy who said you can't start work before a certain time of the morning? No, okay. yeah, no somebody. Yeah, there's see. a or construction yeah, work at 6 o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure what time it is, but there is. Yeah. Okay. okay. Any more questions about? I have one at my house on the weekends. We'll, uh, yeah. Back and catch you. See the report from the fire department. Yeah. I will uh, have that official appointment ready by next week. I missed their meeting, but um, we'll set that up uh, and get together with them. Um, Sandra. In the month of February, we had 833 guests through the Welcome Center. So we're starting out the year on a strong note. That's 22% um, up over last February. And for us, the weather was about the same. We actually closed two days this year, and last year um, was about the same. Um, and we're up 37% year-to-date over last year's numbers. So 
hoping for a strong 2015. Um, in terms of outreach, on March 10th, we hosted the Southeast Missouri River Heritage Group, um, and it's through our uh, participation in that group, which is all of the tourism departments throughout the, uh, I think, uh, uh, 11 or 12 counties in Southeast Missouri. Um, we were able to have St. Genevieve businesses and attractions represented at no charge in the Cape Home and Garden Show last week. Um, and then I just got back from participating with the Missouri Division of Tourism's booth <clears throat> at the Travel South Conference, and that was a meeting with group tour operators who are interested in building new itineraries to Missouri attractions. Um, and if you haven't seen these and are interested, um, we had some great coverage in both the 573 magazine and the um, Show Me Missouri magazine. So if you're interested to see those after the meeting, I'd be happy to show those to you. And we have copies of 573 down at the Welcome Center. Uh, local community, as Kara mentioned earlier, the Welcome Center is this week pay playing host to over 100 pieces of art from our two local high schools as part of the St. Genevieve Art Guild's 2015 student art competition. Um, true to our heritage, we have some incredible talent out there, so um, the Welcome Center is open all day tomorrow, and it's going to be open late tomorrow night because we're participating in the art walk. So if there's any parents out there or grandparents who want to see this artwork, please come down and see it um, during the day or in the evening and take part in the art walk. Uh, the Welcome to St. Genevieve sign at the Highway 61 entrance to Mississippi Lime uh, has finally been installed. And um, despite the weather, the sign stayed in the box for a couple of months before it could get installed. And um, this was a joint effort between our uh, tourism program and the Mississippi Lime. Um, for my part, it came out of a grant, and they uh, footed the bill with this 50% match. So it was a great um, partnership effort, and it looks a lot better than the other one, which we're not sure, but it was hand-painted, so we think at least 30 years old. We're not quite sure. Maybe earlier or older than that. Um, there's going to be another new business in downtown starting in April. Um, Ghost Tours of St. Genevieve will be opening on the first week of April, um, offering ghost tours, guided ghost tours of St. Genevieve's on Friday and Saturday night. Um, at the March 17th Tourism Advisory Council meeting, the group selected three priority issues, uh, one of those being transportation, one being river access and beautification, and one being um, seeking a wildlife area out near the levee, some sort of a designation out in there, that area, uh, at least exploring that. Uh, we have started the program development for Saturdays in St. Genevieve. Basically, this is any Saturday between May 23rd, which is Memorial Day, and September 5th, which is Labor Day weekend. If there's anyone out there listening who would like to um, participate either as a musician or doing the demonstration or dressing in uh, period-appropriate attire for French Colonial and greeting people on the streets, um, would love to have you contact the Welcome Center. And um, if you don't have a costume, we'll find one for you. So don't be shy, call us, we'd love to have you. We're just trying to create more going, in, going on in downtown St. Genevieve, um, especially on the weekends, especially on Saturdays, um, when we have more foot traffic down here, things that people can see and hear and do, creating more of an atmosphere. Uh, and as Kara said, um, tomorrow night is the March 4th uh, Friday Art Walk, hosted by the Downtown Renewal Group. In addition, um, we have two um, other events uh, coming up in April um, besides the sidewalk sale. There's going to be on April 19th and 18th and 19th, excuse me, the Route de Vins Jour de la Terre, which is their celebration of Earth Day. And on the 25th and 26th is the annual Ecole de Soldat, the School of the Soldier, um, which we um, host down at the Jour de Fete grounds uh, by the Moses Austin House. And that group um, meets and has their seminars in the Welcome Center. So we're always glad to see them come back. Some great photo ops. Um, the sessions are open to the public on Saturday, and, um, and they are free. And uh, the reenactors also invite people to come out and wander around their campsites and look at things and maybe bring the kids and learn a thing or two. So that's my report. Are there any questions? Where was the travel south that it was no, it was in Shreveport, Louisiana. Oh, okay. Yes, and so um, yeah, so there's no easy way to get to Shreveport. Right. Let me just tell you that. <laughs> I'm aware of that. You got to fly to Dallas and rent a car, or 
pay exorbitant airfare. So I was doing the fly drive routine. But it was really good. <coughs> nine minute appointments. So you like live your life over again and nine, it's like um, Groundhog Day. Um, nine minute appointments, meeting with people who were interested in building itineraries. And I was partnered up with um, Hannibal, Missouri, myself and Cape Girardeau, and we were kind of pushing the whole, you know, Great River Road, Mississippi River, River Towns experience. Thanks for asking. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Mayor reports. Tom? Well, I've got one. The park board met Monday evening, and uh, we had a robust and spirited discussion. And the park board uh, is made up of dedicated citizens that meet once a month to discuss uh, all things that have to do with our parks and recreation areas that, that the city owns. And um, a couple of the proper members have been on the board for about two decades, about 20 years. And I can tell you they are some frustrated, good citizens. Uh, over the years, they've, they've uh, promoted ideas and talked about what, what the parks need and maintenance issues and, and, and capital expense projects. And I think, you know, of course, they've never really got much of what they've ever asked for. And they're just they're frustrated. You know, they they have a passion to provide activities for for uh, youths and adults alike in the city of St. Jimmy. So our discussion was was focused primarily on the cost savings of the ball fields being taken over by the school system, and how much money does that save the city of St. Jimmy? How much money does that free up out of the park budget? So we talked about that. We talked about the, how much money the park tax generates and how much general revenue has to go in and, and support that so we can meet our budget number. So last year, the uh, park tax fell about $86,000 short of our budget item for the Parks Department. So $86,000 came from general revenue to support the parks. And so, it's, as Martin mentioned earlier, it's going to be difficult, really, for us to understand the economic value of, of cost savings because we're not laying people off. We're, we're not selling equipment that was used to maintain the parks, uh, or excuse me, the ball diamonds. We're just reallocating those man hours. So those, those employees will be doing other things. So it's really an enhancement of services for the citizens of St. Genevieve. Um, one thing that we do know pretty much exactly how much cost savings there's going to be, and that is uh, electricity, as Martin said. Um, so, you know, I think the park board understands clearly that we're not going to, we don't have the money to build a swimming pool. You know, we don't have a couple million dollars that we're going to be able to pop on a swimming pool in the near future. Uh, we don't really have $100,000 to replace or repair the uh, tennis courts. Um, I don't pay real close attention to our playground equipment and other very you know aspects of the various parks that we have. Well, the park board does. These members go out and they look at it, they understand what's going on, and they've been told no over the years, and they're very frustrated, and I'm frustrated for them. You know, these people keep coming back to their meetings month after month after month, and, and they discuss the issues, but they don't have any way to affect getting anything done, right? So um, as, as we have in our packet tonight, I would, I would like to see that we gave that the Board of Aldermen would allow the Park Board some discretionary funds. Now, I'm not talking about $100,000, I'm, I'm $5,000. Uh, for them to spend the way that they voted in their uh, commission on what they think they need, right? So they're looking at the playground equipment, they're looking at landscaping, they're looking at all the issues related to the parks that we're probably not looking at, that Darren's probably not looking at uh, because he's got other stuff to do. I mean, he's busy doing his other things. Uh, I just think that would be uh, a reward to the park board. 
uh, and a relief to them that, hey, they're not getting much, but listen, something's better than nothing. And I think it would really be a benefit. I think they would do a good job and it'd be a benefit to everyone in St. Genevieve to let these people that care about this, that, pardon me, are focused on this, spend a little bit of money and do some small projects that they want to do. So I would just encourage uh, everybody to give that some thought quickly and um, let's free up the, the that five thousand dollars is about what we in electricity, so we know we won't we're not you know going to go in the hole. We're just taking that from one, one line item, putting on another line item, and give the park board uh, a small amount of money to use at their discretion. And uh, I think it'd just be a great idea. I mean, we have a park board because we have a park tax, and we have to have a park board. But those members don't have to keep coming back every month and discussing the, the same issue that we can't really do anything. So I talked in a circle about this, but it's a, it's a passionate thing. And the, several of the part board members are very passionate about wanting to do uh, the right things. And they feel like the city doesn't, the city being the Board of Aldermen, doesn't give them that opportunity. So. And there's some talk about some enhancement to the disc golf or something like that? Well, you know, I, I guess my, my thoughts on that uh, is the park board. Uh, let's give them $5,000, and then they can have a discussion, right. and they can have a vote, yeah. and figure out what to spend that money on. I wouldn't spend a dime on Frisbee golf, right, because I've never seen anybody doing it. I talked to them, well, I saw somebody doing it once, I saw somebody doing it once. Well, you know, our job is to stretch every dollar as wide as we can and touch as many citizens as we can. Um, if the park board is in tune with the, fris the Frisbee golf, uh, whatever they think. I, I don't think we're going to give them the keys to the vault by giving them $5,000. I think that, uh, you know, and, and listen, I hope they do good things, and I hope that in the future we can budget a line item every year to give them some discretionary funding. Well, okay. my son, he likes that disc golf. He's laid it down in Springfield and Florida. Okay, unless I'm misunderstanding something here, Bill Number 4025, an ordinance improving a budget amendment to the City of St. Joe fiscal year budget relating to the Park Board. Expenditures, uh, electricity last year was $8,000. We now change it to $5,522. And then on the next slide, 8015, Park Recreation, recreation Equipment, nothing last year. This year we're $2,478 was what was spent so far. Okay, what, what about... We haven't that? spent out of that 8000 is 2478 And that's marked as park recreation equipment? That well, I, I, that's what I was interested. When I first had this discussion coming in out of the park board meeting, we were talking about equipment. Yeah. <coughs> and I found out what the dollar amount was. I called Darren and said, what can you do with this amount of money? And he said, I can't buy any equipment, I can, but I can do some landscaping. So I said, okay, without telling Pam, to put it in landscaping. So that ought to be amended. That line item should be 6105, stone, gravel, sand, and mulch. So how do we, how do we, could we make, what would we have to do to uh, an ordinance that says, that gives the park board some discretionary spending money? Well, or do we just, or just, does that just manage in-house and we don't have no, to do it? No, it's got to be budgeted. But you're going to have to decide, I can't I mean, there, there is no uh, that's line right. item, whatever yeah. you feel like spending it on. They're going right. to have to decide how they would spend it. So if, if we move it into the appropriate if, line That's where I'm at. The next step for them would do, to be to identify uh, a project or a series of projects that would come up to that $5,000 mark, and then we would have a budget amendment that we could approve or, or deny. So whatever you put in there, you know, it's coming out of our general revenue, uh, our, our anticipated carryover. Yeah, but, but that 5000 is what we we're actually going to save this year out of this year's budget for electricity. We're only going to save no. 2000 well, Now, Monday night, you said that total is $5,000. I know. It is. <laughs> the figures that, that we had on the electric consumption was $5,000 which is what we spent. So when I came back to the office, sat down with Sue, ran the numbers of the $8,000 that we budgeted for it, 
We spent 5522 So now the school will now take over. We, we were a bit over budget on that line item because they raised their, the, 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 the utility the rates. So, so what have we paid in electricity so far this year? It's 5522 Is that what we've paid in, so far? In the first quarter with almost no night use. Well, you have to remember that that was October. Oh, excuse me. October, right. November. Yeah. Right, gotcha. And October was for September usage, which you still had gotcha. um, ball games going on. Gotcha. So if we could uh, pull five thousand dollars out of the budget for the park board, it would actually be about twenty five hundred dollars out of general revenue, yeah. and this twenty five hundred that was left over. Got it. That's probably as clear as mud to everybody that's not been thinking about this yet, but that would it, be okay. Some of the specialized equipment that the park had for the care of the ball fields, did that get, did that go with the property or do we still own that or? <coughs> no there, was, no there was very, I mean, well, we're keeping the, uh, the gator, we're going to keep it. Uh, chalk spreader. I mean, chalk. Oh, most, of, most of that the Yanks have purchased. I don't know that the city purchased much of that in recent years anyway. Drags and. I kind of saw, I think we're going to keep one of the older drags for the uh, the field down on 3rd Street. What about any of those storage buildings down there? Uh, we never purchased the city. I don't think the city ever purchased any of them. That was all dealt with the Yanks money. Well, maybe that'd free up some, if we could declare it surplus and get rid of it, that'd free up some more money for them or something. Well, one, one other spot that we might gain a little bit is the fact we are going to gain, we are gaining some labor that won't be required this summer in getting those fields ready every year. We may, we may be able to not um, put on some part-time summer help. So, but also recall that we're losing seventeen thousand five hundred dollars for the county. Right. Well, I don't know. I wouldn't say we're losing. Well, they're not going to pay to us. Yeah, but, but we were spending it. We're, we were spending it on the ball fields. Well, it, it was going. Was they were giving it, to us because we were maintaining. Yeah, but it the just ball passed fields. through our hands. It's not like we got to keep it and hold it and do something else with it. No, it just went into general. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It was our their level of compensation to us for taking care of the fields. I think we'll certainly have a better. Obviously, we'll have a better idea after yeah. this season of. Where we're going to be able to stand and what we're going to be spending up there. I just, I just, people wise, labor wise, and I really think we need to do the right thing by the park board and, and, and infuse them with, with some enthusiasm. You know, get them, get them to, uh, well, yeah. so when, when we get to this item on the agenda, just move the table it so we got gotcha. to uh, consider that. Gotcha. Give them a chance to consider it. And the other would be. Which I already did. We will be getting some income off of water usage <coughs> that we were basically eating before, which was our own. So there'll be some income coming off of that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it goes into the water fund. Well, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, been, it's, been, it's just really difficult to measure it because we haven't ever measured it in the past. So it's a hard thing to put a number on. Right. Anybody else? <coughs> okay. Uh, we'll go to the minutes of March 12th. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Opposed? And a financial report for February. Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Uh, resolution 2015-24 resolution authorizing the property located at 472 Merchant Street to be declared surplus property and providing further authority. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Resolution 2015-25, a resolution authorizing the St. Genevieve Tourism Department to apply for a grant from the Marketing Platform Development Grant sponsored by the Missouri Division of Tourism in the amount in an amount not to exceed $5,000. Move to approve. 
Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Resolution 2015-26, a resolution authorizing the St. Genevieve Tourism Department to apply for a grant from the Marketing Cooperative Advertising Grant sponsored by the Missouri Division of Tourism in an amount not, not to exceed $4,000. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, thank you. Old business, bill number uh, 4015, first reading. No, no, or that should be second. Second note, no, no. we'll answer at table. Right. First reading. An ordinance of the City of St. Genevieve, Missouri, authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement between the City of St. Genevieve and the St. Genevieve Municipal Band. Make a motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We need a second Do we need reading a... on that being so getting ready to start up. Isn't this our second reading of it? No, that's our first no, reading. What? We, we tabled it. It, it wasn't on uh no. the was here last week yeah. to talk, it really wasn't on the agenda. Mm -hmm. So uh, oh, this is going to be first. Okay. Do we need we're not scheduled to we'll get the first the, uh, payout till May fifteenth. First payout is so I don't mind doing a second reading. <clears throat> May 15th, May 15th, is, May 15th is the first payout, so. No, let's don't. I mean, if it's all right. Okay. Bill number 4021, second reading. Uh, ordinance authorizing the city of St. Genevieve to enter into an intergovernmental cooperation agreement for the investment of public funds for the Missouri Securities Investment Program. Move to approve. Second. Alderwoman Codwell? Yes. Alderman Couch? Yes. Alderman John Stoopy? Yes. Alderman Jokers? Yes. Alderman Huck? Yes. Alderman Prince? Yes. Alderman Ross? Yes. Seven yes and zero no's, one absent. Bill number 4021 now becomes ordinance 3958. <coughs> Thank you. Bill number 4022, second reading. An ordinance of the City of St. Genevieve authorizing the mayor to enter into a financial advisory agreement with Joy A. Howard doing business as WM Financial Strategies to act as financial advisor as set forth in the attached agreement. <clears throat> Move to approve. Second. Roll call. Alderman Ross. Yes. Alderman Prince. Yes. Alderman Hook? Yes. Alderman Jokers? Yes. Alderman Stoopy? Yes. Alderman Couch? Yes. Alderman, Alderwoman Codwell? Yes. Seven yes, zero no's, one absent. Bill number 4022 now becomes ordinance 3959. <laughs> Bill number 4023, first reading. An ordinance of the City of St. Genevieve authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with Bayer Engineering LLC of Perryville, Missouri for construction inspection services for the St. Genevieve River Beautification and Hiking Trail Project in an amount not to exceed $49,500. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Bill number 4024, first reading. An ordinance of the City of St. Genevieve, Missouri, authorizing a two-hour parking restriction on the west side of 4th Street between Jefferson and Washington Street. Move to approve. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, Bill number 4025, first reading. And is this the one that we're going to table? Oh, okay. Make a motion to table this year. Okay. Second. All in favor of tabling bill number 4025? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And bill number 4026, first reading. An ordinance of the City of St. Genevieve authorizing the mayor to enter into a proposal with Vern Bowman Contracting Company of St. Genevieve, Missouri for emergency repair of the storm sewer on 9th Street in an amount not to exceed $14,425. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? 
Let's make a motion for second reading of bill number 4026. Second. All in favor of second reading? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, bill number 4026, second reading. An ordinance of the city of St. Genevieve authorizing the mayor to enter into a proposal with Vern Bowman Contracting Company of St. Genevieve, Missouri for emergency repair of the storm sewer on 9th Street in an amount not to exceed $14,425. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Full call. Alderman John Stupe? Yes. yes. Alderman Jokers? Yes. Alderman Couch? Yes. Alderman McCodwell? Yes. Alderman Hook? Yes. Alderman Prince? Yes. Alderman Ross? Yes. Seven yes, zero no's, one absent. Bill number 4026 now becomes ordinance 3960. Thank you. Uh, public comments, anyone? Anybody? Oh, yes, sir. Well, I'd like to thank all of you guys for taking that yellow house and tearing it down. Thank you. And um, Brock did an excellent job from start to finish. I mean, he stayed on it, professional. Thank you from the, I mean, everybody appreciates that. And making Fifth Street one way and no parking on the west side, that's worked out really good. I mean, it's 100% better. And there was another thought I had is when people park like right on the corners, and you, on the curvatures of it, they'll come right up like that. Paint those red. If they park on there, give them a ticket. Back so far where they're not where, so Wherever so the no parking is, Sure. Paint the corners. You guys get the paint. I'll do it for. I'll. I'll <laughs> you know, seriously. I, I'll. I'll do it. I mean, you give me the paint. I'll go paint them. <laughs> okay. But, well, thank you. I know it took a while to get the house down. But, uh, <coughs> hey, I appreciate it. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thanks for maintaining that. Oh, uh, no problem. I'll keep doing it till you sell it. Well, hopefully, um, I'll find somebody who wants it before, hey, before, before, before the grass grows. <laughs> And there some sort of restriction, Chief, on the as how close you can park to in there? Twenty feet. Twenty feet. Yeah, okay, I'll get it. Anybody else? Great. Okay. Uh, other business, we have approval of a street closure, uh, Progress Parkway from St. Gen from the St. Jane County Community Center for the Night Glow 5K on April 11th. Move to approve. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Approval of a request from the St. Jennifer County Memorial Hospital to use the Main Street Park for the opening ceremony of the Art of Women's Health 5K Run Walk on Friday, April the 24th uh, from 5 to 7 p.m. Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And approval of a request from St. Jennifer County Memorial Hospital for a street closure request, Main and Jefferson Streets for the Art of Women's Health 5K run walk on Friday, April 24th. How long? Is, it, is this the same thing? Is it, it's the same event. One is from 5 to 7 and the other one doesn't have a time. Right. I think it was just, um, I think she explained to me it was just going to be at the beginning of the um, walk when they're all standing there be and then they take off. So do we make the restriction? You know, because it, so. it doesn't so have a time I think frame. we can work with them on that. Last, last year we said they were cage out when they were ready. Oh, yeah. you did this last mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Big a deal. We can yeah. Yeah, we can work with them. Oh, yeah. yeah. Big a deal. Okay. Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Uh, anything else? Yeah, I have a motion going, motion going to a closed session. closed session regarding uh, real estate. I can make, go ahead, Jim. I'll make the motion Second. to go in the closed session to discuss, discuss real estate <laughs> and other things. Alder Norman Codwell. Yes. Alder Couch. Yes. Alderman Johnson. Yes. Alderman Prince. 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 Yes. Alderman
Alderman Jokers. Yeah. Alderman Cook. Yes. Alderman Prince. Yes. Alderman Ross. Alderman Ross. Alderman yes. Ross. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still here. <laughs> Did you say yes? Yeah? <laughs>